Hi. The color key is not working well today. That's why I have this green shadow, but that's only for you YouTube viewers out there. Welcome to the Control Salt Delete Podcast. Uh, this is a podcast about all things fun in gaming. That's right, we talk about video games, tabletop board games, D&D, and game music and audio. And I'm your host, Tony Bertoli. Thank you for joining us on another episode. We're on episode three, in fact. Uh, and this podcast is typically recorded in video format, posted on our YouTube channel, along with our other amazing vid- planned video content, while the audio version of the show that you're hearing right now into your ear holes airs typically every Tuesday. Um, it has been Wednesday lately, and today's actually Thursday. I <laughs> uh, apologize for the lateness uh, this week. My wife actually had some health issues, so didn't have time to record anything until now. Uh, but look for it on every Tuesday, typically, on all major podcast streaming platforms. If you want to leave a comment or review on iTunes, it would be fully appreciated. So make sure to join our uh, follow list on our website, csdcast.com, so that you don't miss most of our content, including all of our socials, at csdcast is the usual handle for all those accounts, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And if you would like to submit a question to be answered on our podcast, submit it to email at csdcast.com. We will read it and answer it the best we can. And last but not least, our Patreon account is live, which is a constant work in progress and will be packed full of exclusive content for you guys. So if you feel so inclined, consider joining one of our fantastic membership tiers. So getting right into the episode, welcome again. Uh, This past weekend on Saturday, um, we actually a chock full weekend like usual, it seems to work out that way. But last weekend, on Saturday, we had a Lord of the Rings party. We watched all three 4K extended editions of the trilogy. That's right. (laughs) You're not going to believe this, but the main reason for uh, having this party was for myself and my wife to watch them all. Because we either were, you know, not into the movies when they came out, uh, or we're just too young to understand and appreciate them, so... We most certainly appreciate them now, I can tell you that. Uh, yeah, I I can't say I remember the last movie at all. Just like 0%. I had, it was fresh to me. Um, I'm sorry for fans out there. I'm really sorry. But I'm up to date now, so we're all good. Um, yeah, uh, and an update. Uh, I told you I was playing Hi-Fi Rush. I beat that, completed the story. Very heartwarming at the end, and it's just, you know, an overall amazing game. I, I highly recommend it. Another game that I also finished was Turnip Boy Commits Tax Evasion, <laughs> which is a silly title, but it's a funny game. It's, um, you know, it's kind of Zelda-ish with funny writing, and um, yeah, it's just a silly, silly game. Pretty fun to play. <laughs> Pretty short, so I recommend that one. It's also free on, on Game Pass right now. So going right into the next segment with this week review. Alrighty, so this week review pick is the game Wo Long Fallen Dynasty. This is an action adventure RPG set in a world where the Chinese Imperial Dynasty is about to collapse. So let's get into it. Uh, Wolong Fallen Dynasty was developed by Koai Tecmo Games and Team Ninja, who are responsible for the Ninja Gaiden games and Dynasty Warriors games. So based on just that, I thought this game would have some legs. Unfortunately, let me tell you. Uh, so this is actually for the PC port This uh, this review is for. Uh, the first complaint I have is immediately at the start of the game with the graphic settings. It you, it maxes out at 60 FPS. Uh, the graphics in general kind of remind me of the original Bayonetta in terms of like how it's optimized. <laughs> it doesn't, you know, it's like <clears throat> brings that style, but is not in a good way. Uh, I also noticed the game was clearly made for PlayStation. Uh, you know, the tutorials, movesets, they're all showing PlayStation controller buttons. Even on PC, no matter what controller you use, it's showing PlayStation buttons. Which ties back again to 
um, optimization on the PC port. It's just... I, I don't know what they were thinking with this one. They, they didn't have PC in mind at all. Uh, and something silly, so just to start with the game, uh, you do character creation like most action RPGs. Uh, I moved all the sliders all the way to the right and <laughs> look like a uh, <clears throat> look like a goblin to say the least and that's being nice <laughs> so <laughs> it was very silly and frightening at the same time um so that was fun to do but uh you know I'm glad that this came out on Game Pass so that I was able to actually try the game without paying full price for it and I'm very sorry for those who have purchased it on Steam thinking this would be a cool game um, you know, again, everything ties into the PlayStation controller. Uh, so the tutorials, you gotta, you have to really think of what the button should be if you're used to Xbox or something else. Um, even the, the customer reviews online are just less than stellar. Uh, Game Pass has it sitting at a nice 2.2 stars. And Steam reviews place it at about 5 out of 10 uh, you know, I personally didn't really find a whole lot of joy playing it, unfortunately. I thought it would at least visually look like a game that came out in 2023, and it kind of has, looks like it came out in 2005. So needless to say, I, uh, I couldn't get past the tutorial because the PC port actually kept crashing, and I ended up uninstalling it. Uninstalling it. I can speak English, I promise. So, again, that's Wolong Fallen Dynasty. If you want to check it out, I would just try it on Game Pass or test it on PS4 or PS5, because that's what it's made for. Um, if you'd like to see our review score for Wolong File and Dynasty, it is available, as well as all of our reviewed games, on the Reviews page of our website, csdcast.com. With that, let's go spelunking in the catacombs. For those joining us for the first time, Spelunk in the Catacombs is a segment that is all about the world of D&D, or Dungeons and & Dragons. So, this coming weekend, actually, on Saturday, that will be the 11th, I will be running Session Zero for Tyranny of Dragons campaign. I, I'm going to have two, uh, actually three, brand new D&D players, so that's going to be fun. Uh, and if you're not sure what session zero means, that's typically you know the first session that the as the DM with your new and veteran players alike, uh, we go through character creation, and if there's time, you kind of set the scene for the upcoming adventure and the campaign. It's really fun because, uh, especially since we have new people joining into this D and D space for the first time, uh, I'm also lucky in that sense that we have a resident rules lawyer in the group so I don't have to remember <laughs> every single little thing and I can also get assistance and uh, any corrections for when I state something wrong or just need a refresher on a rule. Uh, my rules lawyer is typically on the case immediately and uh, we'll make sure to let everybody know to their annoyance and benefit. <laughs> so. Uh, so, back on the campaign itself, Tyranny of Dragons is actually two separate campaigns. Uh, you can run them individually if you want, uh, but they do tie into each other. So the first one is Horde of the Dragon Queen, which if you remember from the first episode, if not, go back and listen to that one. Horde of the Dragon Queen was my first introduction into the world of D&D. That's the game that I started, or the campaign that I started my... Um, uh, what did I have? I had a forest gnome wizard named Dalbert Stumbleduck. In fact, I have I have his mini still. So if you care, on the YouTube channel, you can see a little mini for Dalbert. My friend Kelsey painted and decorated these. It has like real moss on here and everything. She went hard on these. Was, they were great. Um, so yeah, Dalbert Stumbleduck was my forest wizard in that campaign uh so horde of the dragon queen again it gets it gets your players to level eight if you want to run something shorter and kind of stop it there at that point 
Uh, but the second campaign is called The Rise of Tiamat, and that will allow your players to hit level 15. Um, so, as I mentioned again, the first episode of the podcast, I started playing D&D as a player back in 2018 with this very campaign, so I'm excited to be the one to run it for new players. So it's all coming full circle. Very much looking forward to that. So it should be fun. I got the music picked out and everything. Going to set the mood, you know, have um, probably some kind of imagery up on the TV that we're going to use out there uh, while everybody is creating their characters. Should be should be a fun time. All right. Quick segment on that one, but I uh, just wanted to share because it should be fun. So next we move on to looking out for the little guy. Okay, so the thing we like to do on this show is provide Kickstarter project spotlights. So every week, we'll pick a campaign or two that resonate with us in some way and showcase them so that hopefully they can reach a wider audience. So the first spotlight is called Soul Passage. Soul Passage is, um, to quote the campaign page, an action-packed 2D hand-drawn metroidvania game that offers a unique experience for players with features such as fast-paced combat solving puzzles crafting traveling exploring and progression this game breaks the mold of traditional metro metroidvania titles players are given control of the skill tree and the fate of the main character obligor as they embark on an extraordinary journey through the soul passage a soul realm filled with diverse planets, creatures, and an abundance of magical items and weapons to discover. This game's also taking its inspiration from Hollow Knight and Ori in the Blind Forest, so it kind of has that feel and look to it. Um, I'm always a little hesitant with video games on Kickstarter, just because they tend to not do so well. Um, the campaigns kind of never truly reach their goal most of the time. And even if they do... You know, sometimes they just are really behind schedule and you won't see the game for many, many years after <laughs> it's fulfilled. But if you are interested, Soul Passage is a cool looking pick. It looks like it's being made by one person, maybe. Uh, I don't know if they have a team, but that's it looked like it was just one guy making all this and the artwork. And um, the campaign page is actually pretty, pretty packed full of stuff. It looks pretty nice. So... Hopefully it gets there. We'll see. Uh, and the other pick is a two-player strategy card game called Totem Hoarder. To quote their page, Your opponent and you play as two ambitious totem collectors and rivals who are willing to go above and beyond to expand their precious collection of these magical artifacts. Your feverish hunt brings you to a strange new land populated with all sorts of curious creatures. The Carps. That's with the K. The street smart and slippery bipedal fish. The roaches, a Spartan tribe of warlike insects. The fungs, wise and scheming mushroom folk. And the spookies, eerie and unpredictable skeletons. So again, those are the, the creatures um, that are in the game. The artwork also in all these cards makes it a lot of fun visually. And the rules seem easy enough to understand for everybody. Um, they made it like that on purpose. So board games, tabletop games, tend to do pretty well on Kickstarter. So we like to feature these um, a lot just because they they tend to make it out there. <laughs> you know? So if you're interested in any of these picks today, whether it be Soul Passage or Totem Hoarder, you can learn more about both of these projects. Or if you're interested in becoming a backer yourself, uh, you can look at our Project Spotlights page on our website, which is once again csdcast.com, to find out more. These campaigns are only live for another like 20-something days or so, so get on that quick if it's something that you are looking forward to backing or checking out. Alright, that's all I have for looking out for the little guy. Let's get into some game music and audio. This part of the show 
is where I put my degree in film, TV, and video game composition to some good use. That's right. I would like um, to typically talk about in this section some game music and audio sound design aspects. So I felt like it would be cool for anyone interested to also hear about that. Um, usually I try to tie in the game music and audio section to the this week review segment so that today you know, will be absolutely nothing because I honestly could not play well long enough get it <laughs> to form an opinion on the sound designer music. So I figured I would talk about um, on the topic of game audio, but not exactly a game itself. Um, I'm going to be heading out to GDC, which is the Game Developers Conference, uh, in a couple weeks. And it's it's quite a large gathering of video game and audio professionals. So it should be a great opportunity you know, to, to meet new people and learn more about the industry and, and game development. There's a ton of stuff to do. I mean, it runs a full week from Monday to Friday uh, out in San Francisco. So I'm going with my friend and previous co-host of the show, Matthew Griego. So that should be a fun time. Again, there's just a ton of stuff to do. Um, one one cool thing that they they have on the show floor is something called like Alt Control, um, and they they have like these <laughs> silly and proprietary excuse me silly and proprietary controllers uh, that you can play games with. Like um, they said last year, they had a pillow where you you squeezed it. And it did some function in the game, or if you squeezed it harder, it did something else. Stuff like that. Just weird controllers to play games with. So that might be a fun exhibit to see. And there's a bunch of panels and uh, a lot of meetups and parties, after parties. I'm also going to be attending the Gang Awards. That's the Game Audio Network Guild Gang, uh, which I'm a member of as well. So it'll be fun to meet some of the people that I might have come across in that network and um, just talk more about games, game audio. All right. Really short podcast this week because we didn't have a huge game music and audio segment and other things. So let's move right into the closing. So same as every week, I just want to thank everybody for checking out this podcast, listening, watching on YouTube. Um, I've been your host, Tony Bertoli. It's just, uh, you know, I like doing this. Hopefully you guys are liking some of this content here. Um, so again, thank you, thank you for listening to the Con- Control Salt Delete podcast, if I can speak English today. I've been <laughs> apparently not. Uh so make sure to follow us again on our socials, at CSDCast, on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can stay up to date for more content and future content. And definitely check out our Patreon page. We've got some back, uh, behind the scene, I just said backstage, behind the scenes stuff on there. Uh, there is both free content and special content for um, membership members. For, man, I can't speak. For... For each membership tier comes with its own set of benefits, so definitely check out patreon.com slash csdcast. Um, Becoming a member also grants you access to our community Discord server, and then unlocks some special content there. And um, again, I appreciate everybody. Make sure to check out our website, csdcast.com. That is our main hub for everything. Uh, And if you ever have any emails... Questions, concerns, comments, theories, send those over to email at csdcast.com and we'll read them right here on the podcast. So thank you. Hope to see you again in episode four.